right, good morning. Welcome this morning. Hope you're having a great day. God is good, amen? Amen, amen. All right. So we're going to pray and uh, get everything going this morning. Uh, beautiful day again today. And uh, it's going to be uh, 75 and nice from here until the, Jesus comes back. Right? That sound good? All right, let's pray today. Dear Lord, we thank you for today. I ask you to bless this service, bless all that we're doing today, Lord. Let us just worship you today, Lord. Have a wonderful time in your presence today, soaking you in. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everybody have their oasis? You know what I'm talking about, right? Uh, I hope so. I mean, I don't see some heads going, what is he talking about? Okay, all right. So let's go ahead and worship the Lord this morning. Who am I giving it to? Oh, Becky. There you go. Let's all stand to our feet and glorify our Father.
you may be seated oh you're already seated okay god is so good somebody tell us what god has done in your life this week Uh oh Uh oh i just want to thank god we moved the furniture yesterday and um no one was hurt i was the youngest i was the youngest one there so that is a miracle (laughs) i want to thank god for his protection What was so amazing was that Friday, Friday afternoon, we did not have the plans put together yet. Saturday morning by noon, we're almost finished. That's God. That's God. Somebody over here wants to say something. The 
this is my son, Spencer. I got him back. I just want to thank, thank the Lord. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and also, my dad got to come home. He was, he was hurt at work. He fell off a ladder and broke four ribs, had a collapsed lung, and he broke his wrist. Bone right here. So he's got a long road ahead of him. Amen. So, God is so good. Praise the Lord. Amen. Before Lloyd does one, we can do one more, Lloyd. Uh, before he does one more, just say so you no. Know, if you weren't here last week, uh, two weeks ago, we prayed at the altar for this, and. Last week she got the good news that she was getting him back from the courts, and today he's actually here live and in person. Praise Amen. Praise God. the Lord. Amen. Hey, let's look. Let me tell you so something, you folks. Some yeah, I'm coming. Let me tell you something, folks. God is still amazing. Amen. He's still amazing, and he's doing amazing things. I just want to thank the Lord for His healing powers and what He's done in my life. He has healed me beyond measure. And how He has directed me to this church. He has blessed me so much. This is a loving church and a Bible-believing church. I have looked for a long time and He has blessed me so much. And I know there's some people here that agree with me. <laughs> I thank you for that. And Pastor, thank you so much for the belief and the way you preach. Amen. Praise God. God is so good. God is good. God's doing some amazing things. And just to know, also follow up on Trisha's thing, you know, getting older than Trisha's not too hard when she's 22 years old. So, you know, don't, don't feel that bad. All right. So, yeah. Sean, how old are you? 15? Yeah, amazing. Had a baby at 7. That's awesome. Yeah, okay. All right. So, uh, all right. All right. All uh, right. If you're watching online, I'm just joking. Okay. All right. So. Uh, we're going to have a great time today. Right now, we're going to uh, continue to worship God with, with our offering today. Uh, we have our offering boxes in the front and in the back. If you're new here today, we have our green cards in the pews. We'd love to know that you're with us. We also have our yellow cards for prayer requests and praise reports. In a little bit, we'll do uh, our prayer time during worship. And we're just glad you're here today. Uh, if you're online, I, I, did, I never... Hey, we love that you're online. Let us know where you're here and let us know where you're from if you're not from the area. We, we're all part of one big happy family of the Lord. And we want to see God do some amazing things. So right now we're just going to pray for your offering. Go around. Greet one another. Like I said, there's two boxes up here in the front and there's two in the back. One by the, the big world map for our missionaries and one in the back there. Uh, just so you know, an update last week I showed you Karen Miller. I haven't heard anybody give me any negative feedback, so uh, we will be taking her on as one of our new missionaries uh, to Northern Asia, uh, to the, oh boy, I can't, I'm not even going to try to say the name of the people group she's with, uh, uh, the, 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 see, I'm not even going to try, I, I, I'm not even going to try. If you missed that last week, go back on, the, on YouTube and Google last week's service, it's called uh, You Need an Oasis, and uh, in the middle we talk about uh, Karen Miller, she has a video you could, you could rewatch. But uh, we want to continue to send people all around the world. Isn't it amazing in the, the day and age? We can affect people here in Punxsy and then all the way around the world. Praise the Lord. Thank you for giving to missions and this. We give to also our local church to help do all the amazing things we can for God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, dear Lord, we ask you to bless this offering and bless this time, Lord, as we just want to give back to you, Lord, to show that we trust in you. But also, Lord, uh, to spend some time fellowship with one another, Lord, as the family of God. And all God's people said... Amen. Well, let's greet one another and give our offering today. Okay. All right. We can go ahead and have a seat. We're going to continue on with the service today with our announcements and get into the rest of the day. So here we go. I hope. Happy Sunday. I hope you're having a spectacular day so far. But now, before we continue... Here are a few things that we've got going on. On August 5th at 6 p.m., the kids are going to have an event, Soak Zone. So remember, it's August 5th at 6 p.m., Soak Zone. 
Remember, in the back of the sanctuary, we've got the Spice of Life, School of the Bible. It's free information, free resources, free classes you can take to know the Bible more and know Jesus in a greater way. So remember, that's Spice of Life, School of the Bible, in the back of the sanctuary. On August 23rd, we are going to have our church picnic and our water baptism, and it's going to be so refreshing. It's such an amazing experience that you are going to love. So remember, mark that down in your calendars. August 23rd, church picnic, and also water baptism. All right, remember the four things that God asked us to do this year, which are, we're going to be reading through the book of Acts together, and we're also going to be spending quality time together as a church family like we did yesterday. We're also going to be giving to the water project, which is building new wells and planting new churches in Africa. And we're also going to be asking ourselves every day, in every situation and circumstance, what would Jesus do here and now? And those are the four things that God asked us to do this year. Stick to them. God bless. The Battle Ready Men's Ministry Steak Dinner is tonight at the church at 5 p.m. So men, mark that down in your calendars and have your wives remind you. The Men's Ministry Steak Dinner tonight at 5 p.m. Now you know absolutely everything that's going on, but before we get back to the service, here's a quick video about the Men's Ministry Dinner. In Jesus' name, this is a call to all the men. It's time for men to stand up because by now we ought to be tired of sitting down. It's time for us to take our place. It's time for us as men to rule our individual gardens that God has placed us in by his grace. God has not created us and called us into the game of life as men to remain passive sitting on the bench. God has called us for greatness. He has called us to be great and godly fathers, great and godly husbands, great and godly students and co-workers. He has not called us to be satisfied with being dim lights, but rather bright lights that draw the attention of the culture. Could it be that our culture is devolving because men are complaining but not willing to be involved? Could it be that our marriages are failing because men are demanding submission from their wives but not willing to submit to God? Could it be that our young people are lost because men are siring kids but not taking the responsibility of raising them? Could it be that our churches are failing because men are sitting in church but not willing to serve the church? Paul said it best in 1 Corinthians 16, 13. He said, act like a man. This means that you can be a male that has never come around to becoming the man that God has called you to be. We no longer need to be spending our time worrying about and fighting about what's going on in the White House when we're struggling just to get men to stay and lead in their house. God is calling the men and he's calling you right now to be his man. This doesn't mean pride, but it does mean humility. This doesn't mean breaking hearts, but it does mean mending them. This doesn't mean domineering, but it does mean servanthood. It certainly doesn't mean leave, but it does mean stay. This doesn't mean selfishness, but it does mean sacrifice. It doesn't mean giving up, but it certainly means greatness. And whenever we can find these men, we can experience change. Change in our personal lives, change in our family's life, change in our church, and most of all in our culture. God is looking for righteous men, and he's looking for righteous men to stand up in a generation that has forsaken righteousness. So God is asking a simple question, but a powerful question. And the question is... All right, well tonight we're going to have men's ministry at 5 o'clock. we got a wonderful steak dinner planned for you tonight. Uh, if you're a guy, be there. You know, we want to relaunch... Yes, you're not a guy, Irene.
And uh, I, here, I'll answer, I, I, gotta, I have a follow-up question. Okay? I will, I, 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 if there's any steak left over, Irene, I would be more than happy to give you a steak. And I'll give the others a steak if you'll rat out whoever asked you to ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, okay. Just so you know, uh, we do have women's ministry. They'll be having, the, they'll be meeting again starting in August. And I know Bev's on vacation. When Bev gets back, I'll let her have a special meal for the ladies. Okay, how's that? All right. Got to be better than steak. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, um, tonight, gentlemen, um, we have our uh, men's ministry. Uh, we'll start cooking. I don't know what time we're going to start cooking. My wife's picking up the steaks right after church today. Uh, but you're welcome to come early. Chuck said you could bring a, a chair and sit out. Uh, I think he's planning to make a fire and stuff. I uh, dropped some stuff. And uh, now we're going to go. Then we're going to eat steak and have a. Sh- it won't be a long meeting. We have some really powerful stuff to share with you. Just an intro to what we plan to be doing. So we hope uh, if you're alive and well and you're a guy, come on out. It's going to be a great time. It's great to see. The question is, where are the men? You know, it's great. We need to see all of us rising up in the Lord. So we'll be doing that. And uh, afterwards, if there's any steak over, if the men don't devour it all. Hey, that's the way to solve the whole problem. Gentlemen, eat it all. (laughs) That that, that solves the problem. Okay? All right. Eat eat, eat it all. All right? So... uh, Back in my larger days, I, I'm a lot, I was once 380 pounds and I once had a contest where somebody paid me $25 if I could eat a whole 48 ounce prime rib and I did and they said, can you do two? I said, sure, I ate 96 ounces of steak in one hour. <laughs> yep, uh, if you don't, and actually I started a third one. If you don't, I, I, I ate over 100 ounces in one sitting for 50 bucks, but I'm no longer that person anymore. Uh, but some of you might be able to do that, so uh, uh, you might, hey, bring Kempton. I, I, I could solve the whole problem, right? Okay, all right. So, all right. If you haven't known Kempton, I, I had a, what was it? We had a, a young adult thing one night, and we yeah, bought pizza. pizza and uh, we, we have too much left over, and Kempton went up there and folded it over. <laughs> the whole thing, whole pizza, and then ate it. And uh, it was like, oh, okay, your boy could put some food away. All right, so, all right, so we're going to have a great time tonight for the, the men's ministries to come on out. And also, one more thing, if you haven't been baptized, come see me. I'm going to talk about that probably next week. Oop, I'm not ready for that yet. Uh, I'm going to talk about that next week uh, a little bit as we talk about climbing the mountain next weekend. And God wants to follow that. We already have somebody signed up for the day of our Day of Atonement Feast, our church picnic. We're going to have a baptismal that day as well. So if you haven't been baptized yet, or if you've been baptized, you know, you might say, uh, well, I was baptized as a baby. Well, no, no, well, you've been dedicated, but baptism is when you give your, say, I want to be on God's side. So if you want to see me, that would be great. Uh, and we're going to do it on August the 23rd. So without any further ado, we're going to go into a time of worship. I have a short video, and then we'll go worship the Lord. And while we're worshiping the Lord, Pastor Lloyd, if you join me up front, if you have a need today, uh, we would welcome you to come forward. We'd love to pray with you today. Now, no. All right. Now is the time to worship the creator of heaven and earth. Now is the time to glorify his name. Now is the time to sing our hearts out. Now is the time to surrender everything and worship the one and only God. freedom. Let's just lift up our voices today and just uh, praise the name of the Lord.
You have given us freedom. You have given us freedom. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for that freedom. Praise you, God.
it says where two or three are gathered, you are there in our presence. And that's what we want to do. We want to be in your presence. We want to be refreshed. We want to be, have relief from the issues of life. We want to just soak with you and, and be able to come out and say, you know what? I know God's got it. I can react better because I know that God has it. Uh, today, before we go into the sermon today, hey, if you could just, uh, if you have something in the room today where you say, I, I need, need refreshed, or I need relief, I need to soak, I need, I need to just let it, some, God have something off of me, just, just raise your hand. I want to pray for you right now. My hands all around the room. You put your hands back down. You know, we talked about having an oasis last week. You, 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 it's just so important. Let God have it. You know, you just got to let him have I know it, we live in a strange world. That's okay. But remember, you're not a citizen of this world anymore. You're a citizen of heaven. Let God take care of you. He says, I want to. As I pray this, just imagine just soaking in that tub. That's what it should be right now. Just imagine letting it go away. And see, here's the thing. We don't, the world imagines things happening. That's why we have all these fantasy movies and things like that. We don't have to imagine. God says, I can do everything you can imagine and more. God said, you said, God said this. You know what? Let's do that today. Dear Lord, I see all the hands are raised today. Maybe at home hands are raised. I ask you to touch right now, Lord. Let them know that you want to take it away. Let them soak. Let them enjoy. Let them be refreshed and relieved in your presence. Let them know, Lord, that they can just let it go. Because, God, as we put you first in our lives, you say you will take care of us. Today, as we're here spending time with God, having our date with Jesus today, we're saying, you know, things might be happening, but, God, I'm focused on you right now. Now you've got to take care of the problems that are around me. And he says he will. Let him do that today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. And we need to do that because, you know what? It's no fun to go on vacation and then uh, worry about everything, right? You know, and we got to do that. When we come and we soak with the Lord, you get into a hot tub and you're worried about everything. It's not a whole lot of fun, is it? Did you guys switch the screens? Yes? No? Oh, okay, cool. All right. So uh, uh, before we go on, though, I had uh, one last uh, prayer request. I, f- I forgot to take it down with me. I asked... Uh, Keith had a prayer request. I'm going to pray real quick for his boss who had a massive heart attack, and uh, he's on a ventilator right now. Let's just pray for him today. Uh, he wrote it down because I, I told him I forget. See, I did. So good thing you put it on the... So, uh, uh, so let's pray today. Lord, we pray for uh, Keith's boss. His name's uh, Marty. Lord, I ask you to touch him right now who's on a, a ventilator and, and had a massive heart attack. Just to touch him right now. And uh, I, I don't know where he stands with you. Uh, but Lord, ask your Lord just to touch him. You love him, Lord, no matter what, Lord. And maybe give Keith an opportunity to show him the love of God through this experience. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we're continuing our series called It's Vacation Time. And uh, it's a wonderful, usually a wonderful time of the year. Right now it's kind of a little odd because of all the things that are, are, are going on around the world. But you know, God reigns what? Supreme, does he not? God is awesome in this place. And so today, we're still doing our 40-day challenge uh, as we're continuing to see what God is doing, and today is day 13, and, we're st- and uh, remember, it doesn't matter how you do it, just that you have to what? Do it. Do something to make your life and your relationship with Jesus even better. We live in a critical time. We had a unique class Wednesday night talking about something that's been going, uh, uh, that's been said, uh, it's been um, going viral and stuff, and then we need that God is speaking to Christians today, He's speaking to believers today. You need to stand up, wake up, and see uh, what is going on. And during this series, when I did it, I didn't know that this would all be part of it. I knew I was going to do this series. I didn't know I was going to talk about 40 days and all this when I started. And God dropped on my heart. And the first week, God said, are we really behaving like the children of the King of Kings? You know, we are, when you become a Christian, you're a child of the King of Kings, the almighty, most powerful person who's ever lived and who ever will live, and He lives forever you know, we have that resource in our lives. We should start living like that. We don't have to be defeated. We can be what? Victorious. Last week, do you know where your what? Oasis is. You know, I, I can't, you know, that, 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 that ministered just as much to me as I hope it did to you. It's so important to have it. How many oasises do we have to have? Three. Say, somebody paid attention. Praise the Lord. Yeah, church, office, church, work, and, and home. We need all of them because, you know, Things can happen anywhere. We need that time. We could just have that in our lives. All right. And today, so we're going to continue today. Today, we're going to be going to the lake. You know, sometimes people go on vacation to a lake. I love the lake. The lake doesn't always love me. 
It is relaxing. It's peaceful. You can have a lot of fun on the lake. You can do some great things. Well, lake, and I want to try water skiing. I didn't work. I have very large feet. I have size 14 feet, but there's also something unusual about it. My feet are very narrow. And so it's usually big feet, wider feet. Mine are narrow and long. So I tried to put those big old feet to skis when I was like 13, 14 years old. And the problem is that they don't, they don't make skis, you know, the normal skis you get at the ski rental don't quite always fit real well. So we're on a youth trip. And they got the, everybody skiing and I want to do it. And so the power boat, you sit in the water and you, you squat down, not going all the way down because I might not get all the way back up. All right, so, but I'm there, I'm squatting down, ready for it to go, and the boat goes. My feet do not stay in the skis. And the goat goes, and I'm going, and I can't tell him to stop because my, water, my face is going, finally the guy turns around and stops, and I'm all beat up all over. Oh, you say you want to try it again. I was 14. You know what I said? Yeah. And so they tie them on real tight. Said, yes, Monday, I'm tight. Get down again. <laughs> Didn't go as far because they watched me this time. And they were all laughing at me. It just, you know, I, I, I didn't have a great time with that. Another time I went to the water and, and I did this. I need a little bit of probably sound on, on this video here because the sound's not real good. When I first came here, my first vacation, I went on a trip and uh, a lot of you aren't here for this video. And I only have about 15 seconds of it. But I like to do things that I probably shouldn't do. Uh, but uh, I wanted to go parasailing. Now, just so you know, parasailing, I'm not a big believer in going up really high. Anybody know what parasailing is? You, you go, go high. Yeah. Uh, and uh, when we were registering for the trip, there were a couple different versions. There was the 200 foot, the 300 foot, and the 800 foot. I didn't do the 800 foot. I did the 300 foot. I'm like, oh, that should be too bad. And then right before we went parasailing, we went to the Statue of Liberty. It was 327 feet high. This is the day before. And I'm like, I already paid for it. So my girls went up first, had a good time. Then it was my turn, and I tried to back out of it. Didn't happen. And I got up, and you know, it was great. Actually, once I got up there, everything was fine. Until. Make sure the sound's up. I'm, I'm doing good right now. Whoa. Uh, okay, now now it went blowing and, and I'm looking scared. Uh, we're probably gonna. Uh, can we go down now? And now we went back up. We're a lot higher than we used to be. Uh, so I, I, I was, here's the thing, I'm saying if we go back down, I'm way up here, they're way down here. They ain't hearing me. It's going as long as it's going to go. Okay, and I'm just like, and then all of a sudden we started to go higher, and I'm like, oh Lord, and, this, and now the wind's blowing, I'm like, okay, praise the Lord, got back down, and it was great. Would I do it again? Yeah, I do want to do it again. And if I do it again, you'll have another funny video, because I'll probably get scared again. That's just who I am. Um, uh, Chuck, I, I have a lot of faith. Oh, that, that, that's, that's great. That's wonderful. You, you did 800. Okay, that's... that's, that's uh, oh, we're, we're not taking bets. Okay, we're done with that. Okay, right, here we go. So, uh, but another thing I like to do, I like to go to the lake. I like to swim. I enjoy getting in the water. My, my girls, not so much, because they, when they were little, nowadays, they, they rather just go out to the beach or the lake and just tan. Uh, and do that. Uh, I, in Florida, I loved going to the beach. I'd take some of my friends, and, we, and, uh, and I had a bunch of youth who would go with us on our different trips, and they would never get in the water. And I'd say, you're from Florida. i said, yeah, we love the beach. All we want to do is tan. I'm like, but the waves are there and all that. And uh, my girls don't like the lake so much because, well, there's stuff in it. And they're, they're, they're not good with gross, slimy stuff, right? No, they're shaking their heads. Yeah, that's, that's not, not, not their cup of tea. And, and, and you know what? It, 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 and that's okay. But I, I like doing that. And another thing I like doing in the lake is the concept of fishing. Now, I use the word the concept of fishing. 
I use that because I really don't know what that is. I have gone fishing many times in my life. And, well, just when I was a kid and I was in a group called Royal Rangers at our church, they would go fishing, and we'd go fishing, and we put the fish in the water, and there's a couple of boys, they catch fish. I caught nothing. I even would put, they put all this bait on it, and there'd be fish right in front of me, just drop the thing right in the water, and, and no fish would bite. I, I couldn't catch nothing. And then when I was a little older, I went fishing with a friend of mine on the first day of trout season and, and couldn't fish nothing. And, and, and I got so frustrated, I started yelling at the fish. And the guy said, and, they, and the people around us said, get him out of here. All right. And I had gone fishing over and over. My wife can fish. I cannot. And then one day, as in Jacksonville, Florida, I was in my 30s. And uh, we went down to one of the elders' house. And uh, it was Will Allen's house. And they, we went out to his, he had a little... Uh, dock on the St. John's River and we went fishing and we sat there and he caught fish. His grandkids who were like five years old caught fish. And all of a sudden I saw my pole going like this. And he said, what are you doing? I said, what's that mean? You got a fish. And I'm like, so I start pulling on the fish. And I start reeling in, and it's, and it, and it's neat because it's like this thing's struggling, and I get out, and it's so wonderful, I feel so accomplished, I got a fish about that big. He said, that's a terrible fish, that's a bottom feeder fish, throw it back, and I'm like, but it's the first fish I ever got. Then I took the fish and threw it back, so I threw it back in the water, about a half hour later, I had another little thing, and I pulled it out, it was the same fish. Had to be, it was this big. I'm so glad God gave me a stupid fish. All right. But you know what? I, 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 love, I, I like going out there and sitting and enjoying and, and just being out there and, and, and the fishing experience. It's a concept, not an actual thing yet. Uh, so, uh, but you know what? There's something about just being out on the lake for that. Well, part of fishing, though, is that experience of things that are happening. And Jesus uses fishing a lot in the Bible. We'll read one passage today. It's in Luke chapter 5. As so it was, as the multitude pressed about to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret, which is also the lake of Galilee, and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. And he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's. There we go. And asked him to put out a little further from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. And when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have told all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and the net was breaking. So they singled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with them were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will catch men. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. So this story, Jesus is out there and he says, Hey, let's go fishing. And they go say, Well, we've been fishing all night and haven't caught anything. He says, Lay down, put your nets out here. And they put their nets out there and they got so many fish that the boat began to sink. And we know it had to be an amazing multitude because Simon and his partners, James and John, they were professional fishermen. They knew what a good catch looked like. And this says it astonished them. It had to be an amazing amount of fish. And and this is what God does. When you follow God and do what God asks, God fulfills dreams. This had to be a dream catch of fish for these guys. God doesn't want to just do something. He wants to blow your mind. Now what you have to understand is Blowing my mind doesn't always mean it's a giant thing. It could be something small that God does that blows your mind because you didn't think God even cared about the little thing. I sometimes can make a good argument that the little things should blow your mind more than the bigger things. And just as Jesus says now to them, you'll catch men if you pay attention to what I'm about to teach you because catching men is the hardest thing to do. Because fish are pretty well, they're not supposed to be really smart. Though I think they're really smart because I've only caught two. What's that say about me? Don't go there. Okay. But you know, we're trying to catch them in their hearts and their lives for all of eternity. Now the disciples, they go out and they listen to Jesus, but they don't catch men right away because they don't quite follow the lessons real well. 
Because even after Jesus is rose from the dead, they're still doubtful. They're afraid up in the upper room, waiting for the Holy Spirit to come. But then when he comes and they get the tools that they need, they understand what it is to follow Jesus. And then what happens? 3,000 get added the first day. And then it says every day thereafter, continually, they were added to the church daily, those coming to the Lord. And this is how we're supposed to catch fish. Now then I'm going to tell you what God has told me how to catch fish. I'm going to tell you how not to catch fish. This is the one thing you can't do. You cannot yell at the fish. I told you earlier about how I did that, and I got thrown out of the first day of trout season because I was just so, I was out there, and I saw people bringing in trout, and I was like, fish, get on my hook. You know what? And all they do is they just scatter away. You know, you can yell at the fish all you want. They are not going to jump in your boat. I thought if I yelled at them long enough, they would get the picture and get on the hook. Didn't quite happen, and I did that for quite a while. But, you know, we got to make sure we don't do that. It does not work. The same thing is when we try to bring others to Jesus, we cannot yell at them. We can't go up to people and say, you're a terrible, rotten person. I, you, you're a, you, you can't do that. They already know that anyways. They already know that they're not with God. They might, not even know, they might think they're doing great, but they're still going to hell because they don't realize that being a good person is not what God wants. God wants you to give your heart to Him and life to Him so He can what? Bless it. And if you yell at them, they're going to run away from you just like they don't like getting yelled at by their boss or by their family member. It doesn't, we, we, we do that just like fish. People will what? Run away. That is not the way to get someone saved. You know, we, it, it, that, that hurts. And there's a lot of preachers out there who will do that. And it's like, well, if you do a lot of that to people, you know, it makes my job harder because God says we're supposed to what? Love one another. I don't know about you. When you're yelling at somebody, you don't feel a lot of love. You know, I love my life very much. She's over there today. Hi. Hi, Joanne. Okay. I gotta be, I'm treading water now. But you know what? You know, God, you know, there's, we, we love each other. But I do occasionally do the dumb thing. And then she'll yell at me. I know she loves me, but I ain't feeling the love right there and then. I feel like that about that big. And then I got to go do something to fix that. Just say, no, I, 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 I never yell at her. Right? Oh, okay. All right, well, every relationship has issues. But you know what? But when you do that, what happens? Nothing, gets, nothing goes well. But that's what we got to what? Not let the sun go down our anger. You know what? Because you know what? We do love each other at the end of the day. But when we yell at one another, it does not do a whole lot of good. You know, we're supposed to love each other as family. If we start yelling, and it happens in churches. People yell at each other at church. How is that ever going to solve a problem? If someone has a problem, they need to be what? Love. They need to be able to fix it. They're not going to fix it if you're pointing it out and yelling at them. That, it's not gonna, all they're going to do is what? Other church. And then they're going to have to join another family. And then they're going to tend to hide the sin they have. And they'll never get it fixed. And they'll be on the judgment day surprised, won't they? But, who, but God's always watching, so we, he not only sees, here's the thing people understand, people, God sees what everybody does. Yeah, he sees what the sinner does, but you know what, he sees how we treat the sinner. Not a lot of amens on that one, huh? We got to be careful, remember, God sees everything, not just what the sinner does, but how we treat the person who sins. How do we love them back into the Lord? You know, we need to do that. Does God yell at us? If you read the scriptures, God does yell. God does get upset. But you know who he yells at? He yells at the believer. He yells at his people in Israel. Who should what? Know better. He never yells at the lost. He never yells at the Gentiles. He never yells at those who are not with him. He yells at who? The people who are supposed to what? Know better. Why? Because he shows us how to do, and sometimes he just has to get our attention. But he's not trying to get the sinner's attention. He's trying to get our attention because we are doing it what? Wrong. We represent, does not want us to misrepresent him. We are playing an eternal stakes game. We cannot misrepresent him. So what do we need to catch fish? Well, we need, well, we need the right gear. For a lot of guys, this is a wonderful store. I go in the store and I go, oh, I'm just not an outdoor guy. I just not not who I am. I just it, it just I, I when, when I went fishing, you need to go buy a fishing pole. I'm, bought, I'm later on the service. I'm going to use this. I'm going to have someone help me because I don't want to kill myself. Uh, I remember the first time I went fishing. I went to cast it. I'm not even going to try because I'll mess it up and I'll take someone's eye out. Okay, and, and, and I did. I went like this and I swung it and I caught myself in the back. <laughs> you just got to know your limitations in life. I like to do just about anything, but it doesn't mean I can do just about anything. 
Okay? And, and God, you, you have to have the right equipment. But here's the thing. You can have all the right equipment you want. You can buy all the stuff. And here's the great thing about God is, you know, there you go buy, and some stuff is really expensive. I've seen $1,000 fishing poles. I just can't imagine spending $1,000 on a fishing pole, especially for someone who's caught two fish in his life. That would be a bad investment. But, you know, we, we, people will go and they'll spend lots of money on that. I have a friend of mine in my last church. He came and did our, our men's wild day, game dinner a while ago. He's a big-time fisherman, and he, he loves a place called C- C- Cabela's. He said that's his toy store. He shows me all the stuff he's bought. He might have, I bet you he has over $10,000 of just fishing gear. And I'm like, man, I just, I just I, okay, that's your thing, dude. That's great. And, uh, but, and it can get expensive. But here's the great thing about God. God says, I will give you all the equipment you need, and it doesn't cost you a dime. God wants to give you everything you need to go out and be fishers of men. He wants to give you all the equipment, and it's free. You don't have to worry about a chain shortage. No one gets that joke. Okay. All right, you haven't watched the news. Okay, okay, but, but you know what, we need, but, but here's the thing, you can take the, the pole out, but you're not going to catch any fish by just pulling the hook in the water unless you find really, 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 really dumb fish. Okay, what do you got to put on the hook? You got to put what? You got to put some type of bait on it. And there's two types of bait. There's either live bait or you can go with lures. Okay, you got one or two choices. And we're going to talk about uh, both of those today. And uh, so first let's talk about lures. You know, uh, now, if you ever watched a professional fishing competition, they all basically use lures because most of the time in professional competitions, they outlaw bait because they want to see how good the, the fisherman is. I, I, I've seen lures. I've never used one because, oh, good grief, I can't catch it with live bait. Why am I going to try the events side of, uh, of fishing? Um, but you can lose. Wouldn't it be hilarious if you actually tried a lure and I caught like a big fish and it would, people would, you know. But... Uh, Unlimited, but there's some benefits to artificial lures. The first one is this. You can use it over and over again. Unlimited. When the worm's gone, the worm's gone. Okay, all right? You can use it over and over again. Uh, it can save you money. It's uh, cleaner than live bait. Live bait is, 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 is kind of messy. It's, it, it, and it's cleaner. And it's also what? It's more convenient. Because uh, you have it right, you don't got to do is grab your tackle box and go. You don't got to go anywhere and buy anything. You have it with you. Now, there's some disadvantages to having using a lure. Uh, it's it's more difficult. You got to be a better fisherman to use the lure. Um, it's physically taxing. You, you, to be effective, you got to keep moving it because the worm moves on its own. The it, artificial means it's not real. So you got to make it move. And, and lastly is you need to find the right fish for that lure because not every fish responds to the same type of lure. And, and they're, they're predatory. They've they got to find out where they're hiding that they'll actually go after what you're putting in the water. Now in the church, we, we use lures. Uh, lures would be uh, examples of lures in our church would be this. Our, our Easter and beyond. We're, we're luring a type of, of, of person to it. Uh, what else? Uh, our Jeremiah project, which we'll be getting again in August. We're going to be putting that back on the agenda. Uh, next up, our Christmas blessing we do every year. We invite families in. And uh, recently, our Vacation Bible School, Faith, Fun, and Freedom. Um, now, this is to mention a few of the things we do. Uh, like a lure, we can use these over and over again. It's great. We do. Every year, we do these things. It's convenient because they come at the right time where they are. And, and uh, they're, they're not as messy because, you know, we're, we're, we're providing a service. We're not really digging down into their lives. We're having to really share our lives. We're just sharing the program that's going on. The drawbacks are, just like a lure, uh, they're, they're physically demanding sometimes. We've got a lot of work goes into a lot of preparation. You need patience in the process. Uh, you have to also what? You have to advertise. You have to find the right fish you like it. You have to advertise correctly. You know, if we're running a VBS, we don't want to advertise it to the 60-year-olds because that's not really an event for them. You know, we got to be the different lures for different what? Types of fish that we're going after. And, but these are effective ways to get fish to come in the door to meet Jesus. And we need to do that. It's a good thing to do because we need to find ways to creatively get them in. There's other ways. There's other lures we use that maybe not as visible. Uh, a couple I thought of. Uh, the cafe, this morning, the cafe was full. How many enjoy the cafe? All right, after church, how many enjoy the cafe? It's a wonderful thing. You know, it's a great time for people to meet people. I know a lot of new people have come to me and said, we just enjoy having that time to get to talk to somebody. It's a great experience. If you haven't gone to the cafe, check it out. See somebody you haven't seen in a while. Look at how many people are here. I'm sure you don't know everybody. I do. I know everybody's name. 
but you don't. What, what a great way to expand your friendship base. Wouldn't that be awesome? Uh, it's a great tool for that. Because you know what, what we're about? Are we about religion? No, we're about what? Relationship. That's why, we, that's why I decided to do it before and after church. And yeah, can it be taxing? Yeah, we got to get people to run it. By the way, if anybody's interested in being part of that, we'd love to have you on the team. Uh, tonight we're having the men's fellowship. We're having a dinner with it. Why? Because, you know, we want lords to attract things and make things be the way they are. Uh, another thing, uh, you have nursery kids and youth ministry. How many of you appreciate the children's ministry at the church here? Yeah, you know, they do a great job. We have a wonderful team. We have a good youth ministry. Somebody in the nursery. Not every church has that, but it's great to come in and have your kids knowing they're going to have their own worship service, their own prayer time, their own message. And then the adults can come in here and they can have their own time together. Isn't that an awesome thing to have? And these are parts of the things that draw people in. Uh, on there you might notice music. Isn't it great to have good music? You know, I, I, we don't just put any, anything just up on stage. Why? Because, you know, we want to have good stuff that's going on. Janitorial, yard work, you might not think about that, but, or decorating. You know, if the place doesn't look good, imagine putting a, a, a lawyer that, that, that's falling apart. It's not going to do its job, is it? We need something that looks well. Right now the church looks great. I want to thank all the people. I know Ron's not here today. I want to thank him for all his work. Tim yesterday was doing a uh, uh, mode and, and weeded yesterday, and Larry, and all the guys who helped keep the place looking on the outside. And inside, we have all the, look how the church has changed, the different things that we have. Thank you for all the, I, I, I could go on and on of those who are part of that. If you like doing that, come see me. We can always use part of that. I still want the water feature, if we ever can get that worked out, that I talked about last week. I'll put that out there. But all these things come together, because you know what? We're tr- it's not for our benefit, it's for those who will come in. So they can come and hear about the Lord. Because you know what? All these different things affect different fish different ways. That's what we've got to understand. You know, it might not be what you like, but you know, it might be something else someone else likes, and that's why we need to do it. Why? Because we need to attract what? A certain type of fish? That's the thing. A lot of churches want to attract just a certain type of fish. You know what? I I don't have a vision for a certain type of fish. I have a vision that we get every type of fish. You know, and that means we've got to do things that will attract different types of fish. And if you've been here any amount of time, you know that I will almost do just about anything to attract any type of fish. Some of you are going like this. I'm like, okay, yeah, that's okay. But you know why? It's okay. Because you know what? God loves what? Everybody. And I've, I've talked to people, we, we, we want this cert, certain type of person. Okay, that's great. But you know what? God will give you that type of certain person, but he's not going to give you what you want unless you go after everybody because God wants what? Everybody to get saved. Church cannot be have this small-minded uh, focus to go on. Um, so we have those different things. And on that note, uh, before COVID happened, I had an, I had an, an, our Jeremiah project. I had an idea that I think we now need to make happen. Uh, we we went through a bunch of ideas the church gave, and then we had a team and got together. And then I took it to the elders, and then to the to, to, to the board, and, 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 and I was excited, and I actually even talked to somebody, he got some ideas for me, and then things kind of, well, things have happened in the last six months, and, uh, and, I, and, and my wife's saying, wouldn't it have been great if we had that ready when the festival was going on, we could have, because all the kids' events went bye-bye, and it's like, man, we missed an opportunity, a golden opportunity, but here, here was the idea that came up, and if you're new today, you, 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 you haven't heard of it, if you might have forgot about it, but I had this idea about Oops. Oh, yeah, we do weird things. If you weren't here last week, this is, yeah. Somebody asked me. To By the way, if you're here today, I'm a little unusual. I'm weird. You know what? It's okay. It's okay to be weird. You know what weird does? I ain't putting a video in and forgetting to play, but we, I take yeah, well, I great time with my sermons. Why? Because I want you to remember These things. Shorts. So if you missed it last week, you watched the whole thing online. If you missed it, just go online. But, you know, I take a lot of time putting some things again in the sermons. Not that I want to take away from the word. I want to add to it is that people really make it involved in their lives. But one thing we need to add is this. Mini golf. I talked about that. Who remembers me talking about that a while ago? And it kind of went on the wayside because everything happened. And uh, not that we're going to make something like this. And everything we do, we try to do it the best excellence we can. Whether it's VBS, whether it's Christmas Blessing, whether it's Children's Church, whether it's Youth Ministry. We always try to have possible because you know what? It's not enough to do something if we can't do it what? Well, that's why tonight the men are having steak, and apparently the women might be having... Oh, boy. I... Lord, I, I, you tell me to do things in excellence, and I get myself in trouble. Okay, all right, but 
you know, we want to do things. Why? Because we should as a church stand out, should we not? And, uh, and, and I went to Russ because he, he likes to do wood things. Yeah, if, you like to see, if you like wood stuff, go see Russ. He has all kinds of really cool stuff. I'm sure he'd show it off, right? I, I, know, I know he would because you know what? God that makes that type of stuff wants people to see it. He does some really excellent stuff. And so he came to me when I put this idea out. He came to me with some drawings. And I was like, okay. And then, but then things kind of went sideways. Didn't get quite, it, was, it was right, I think, the Christmas season we first talked about it. And then, and then things just kind of went sideways for a while. And then so God was speaking to me. He said, put this back on the burner. If you want to help with that, we want to put that together. Uh, Russ can't build them. My goal is to have a nine-hole course that we can store in a trailer that we can bring out and back and have it out like once a month and invite the community out for free mini golf, maybe have a cafe, sell some stuff for missions or whatever. But he says, you know, you know, you reach our community right now. As you know, right now, a lot of things are, are no-nos right now, right? And uh, just so you know, I'm on the... Uh, I'm, I'm the assistant high school girls soccer coach because uh, my daughters are on the team. Otherwise, I'd go for the, the men's side. But my daughter's a senior this year. My other daughter's a sophomore. And uh, so, uh, I, so I get all the uh, things from the high school. And uh, this fall, uh, pretty much there's not going to be any, if, if they have sports, there's not going to be any fans. Uh, and and it's, 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 it's just what the thing we live in. Thing, and, and our town is sports craze, for lack of a better term. Uh, and uh, so, uh, what I like, and I was thinking, when winter comes up, people are going to be looking for things to do. Wouldn't it be great if we had one one night a month throughout when it gets cold out, where they could come at maybe a Friday and a Saturday night once a month? We offered that, and people came. What's our prophecy? People would come to us, right? And people came on. Yeah, they play golf. And he's like, well, that's not Christian. You know what God says? Well, we got to use bait to get them on, right? You can't win somebody if you can't what? Talk to them. Hey, you're letting us play for free. Hey, can I talk to you for a minute? What's the harm in asking that? What's the harm in putting all of our church stuff around, putting our stuff around, letting them see that? Maybe we, put, maybe we do nine holes and we put it there and all the way through the whole building and let them go, make them go through the whole building. Wouldn't that be neat? That just came to my head. I don't know if that's weird or not. All right, but I'm always, my mind's all, if you haven't known, not my, I will think of the, it doesn't mean it's, just because I think, I think it doesn't mean it thou shalt be. Okay. Um, but, you know, we need to think of creative ways to get people, and what a thing, to get people hope, give back to our what? Community. You know, people are bored out of their gourd. So if you're interested in that, please come see me. That needs to be on the front burner now. And I think it was a God thing. We first thought about it. We didn't know COVID and all this stuff was going to happen. You know, and you know, what's closed right now? Bars and nightclubs and all these different things. You know what? They're looking for something to do. Now, we're not going to offer alcohol. But those same people are looking for something to do. We'll offer floats, root beer floats. Yeah, that works, right? Yeah, you got some beer? Yeah, we got root beer. <laughs> we got to find ways to bring people into the Lord. So, so using artificial lures, using things that are out of the box, I think God wants us to use. But another thing God wants to use is what? Well, the other one is what? Live bait, right? And live bait works good because fish are, are carnivores. You know what? So are a lot of humans, aren't they? And not just with meat. Um, we like to eat each other up, don't we? And do things to one another. And when you bait your hook with something you're offering that the target wants, it usually wants, it will go after it, won't it? And that's what we need to do. We need to offer stuff that they want, stuff that they really need in their lives. And that's what I'm talking about uh, today with our live bait. That's us, our lives, talking about our walk with Jesus. Are we actually, with ourselves individually, offering something that what? The world wants. Now, there's advantages and disadvantages to having live bait. We'll go over the disadvantages first. Number one, it's messy. You, know, you get the worms. Actually, I have worms in my office. I forgot to bring them in. They're in my refrigerator. Uh, I was going to pull them out and all this. And, and uh, just realized I forgot to bring that in here. But that's okay. Who's ever gone fishing? You know how messy it is. Uh, so, uh, and yeah, yeah, trying to put them on. I remember the first time I put a worm on a hook and the guts came out. Yes, you were like, ooh. I was like, cool. I was like, boy, that's what's inside something? That was neat. I love science class. We got to dissect things. I, I, I like that stuff. One time we had a frog, and, and it had a really big belly. And we opened it up, and there was another frog inside of it. And, 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 and then, well, then I got education on what that meant. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you, 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 you're not getting the joke, okay? I went home and explained, and the teacher said, go ask your parents. All right, so now you get the joke. Okay, all right. When you're a seventh grade, that was really cool. 
Um, so we got all that going on. So, so it's messy. And we can understand is, when you deal with others in the world, their lives are what? Messy. And a lot of times, people don't want to use their life to touch somebody else because we think their life is messy. Well, here's what we've got to understand. Before you were saved, you were messy. Guess what? You might still be messy. But you know what? God saw you and he said, you know what? I'm going to get my hands dirty. I'm going to do that. God said, and he, you know what he says? We're still going to mess up, but he still what? Has his hand on our life. God, God's not messy. We are. And we need to realize, in order to win the world, we need to realize that, yeah, we might see, oh, that person, they got their life messed up. I want to stay away from them. But there was a point where your life was messed up and somebody may have wanted to stay away from you. But aren't you glad someone actually came and talked to you? It seems to be in my career, I always end up with messy people. Yeah, I, think, I think there's a reason for that. God sends them that way because he knows I won't turn anybody away. You know, because I, I will talk to anybody. Yeah, there might be some messed up people, you know, but you know what? Just because they're messed up, I was too at one time. And we need to be willing to what? Get our hands messy. All right now, actually, if, if anybody watch the TV show Tough as Nails? There's a new show on. It's about regular working people. It's called Tough as Nails, and, and they're trying to... Uh, uh, they do dirt jobs and they get their, it's all about the working people of America and how they get their hands dirty. It's a really neat show. We need to, as Christians, want to get our hands dirty. Too many times Christians want to wear the white glove. You know what I'm talking about? You know, and then, oh, if that's dirty, I don't want to touch it. You know, we need to want to touch those who are dirty. You know, that's what Jesus did. The next disadvantage about live bait is the availability can be limited. You know? You know, you have to actually either dig up the fish, the, the, the worms from the ground. When I asked Brenda to get me the worms, uh, she said, just go out and dig it up. I said, I, I, don't, know, I don't even know where to find worms. Uh, I, I, I'm, no good at, I'm not an outdoor type of guy. She got, and they're in my office. I'm so sorry I forgot to bring them out here today. I don't know if she dug them up or her kids dug them up. or Damien, good job, Damien. You're okay with getting dirty, right? Awesome. You did, you did a good job. Awesome. Give Damien a round of applause. That's great. But, you know, we got to be... But you know what, you might not, but if you don't find them, or if you don't have money to go buy live bait, it can be limited in its availability. In our lives, our lives, not, not us personally the bait, but how we live our lives, what happens in our lives is debate. The question is, will we make our life available to somebody else? The avail- actually, our availability is not limited, because God's always doing something. The question is, do we make our life available? And that can be tough sometimes because we, we, we love to be, it's all about what? Me, or I don't have time for this, or I don't want to go do that because it's, well, it's messy and I have my time. And, what's God's, God always has time for us, doesn't he? The next thing is this, the other disadvantage of live bait. It takes maintenance. Live bait, to be live, has to be kept what? Alive, yeah, that is dead bait, right? The fish want to see the worm moving, don't they? That's what draws them to it. In order to keep live bait alive, you've got you, you, you to gotta keep it alive. That's why it's in the refrigerator, because I didn't want them to die. I don't know. Maybe they're frozen. I put, a, I put it right underneath the freezer part of my little fridge, so I'm not sure if they are alive, but maybe that's why I didn't bring them in. Uh, uh, d- d- just not my thing. But you know, it takes maintenance to, d- to do that. And we also, you know what, it can be a bit complicated and time-consuming. And, but you have, to, you have to take your life and keep it alive. Don't let it wither or die. That's the purpose of these 40 days. Christians, by and large, we need to make sure our witness is alive and well because you can't, you can't be available if it's dead. You know, no point. Well, you can have all the dead worms you want, but it ain't going to do you any good. And we need to be able to do that in our lives. And not just so we can catch fish, but so we can be blessed. Because when we're blessed, then our life wiggles a lot better. Because people see the great things that God's doing in our lives, and that will, then the fish will come latch onto that. And that's what you want. You want fish to come to you, not you go get the fish. That's a much better way to have it happen. And we need to make sure it happens in our lives in the right way. And, it's, and, it's be- and the better you are, the better fish you can catch. Because here's the deal. The more alive and vibrant your faith is, the more God can bring into your life. You want to be fishers of men? God has plenty of fish to bring your way, but He's not going to bring you fish if, you're not gonna, if He knows you're not going to do anything about it. If you want to do great things for God, make sure your life is right. That's the purpose of the 40 days. Now, there's some advantages to, you know, having live bait over the lures. You're offering the fish something they actually want. You know, they, they want that juicy piece of morsel. You're, you're, tar- you're, you're presenting that. Our lives need to be juicy. And that juice is what? 
the Holy Spirit moving through us, God blessing us. Yeah, we might have a problem. But that's what we need to refresh, relieve, and soak, and let God take care of the problems. And let, hey, look how great things are going in my life because God's got it. And we know that. And you need to see in your life, when they see your life like that, they'll go after it too. Because they, that's what they want. They want their issues solved. Now, I'm not saying today God's going to solve all of your issues just like that because then he will take it for granted. But he says, I will always take care of you. Don't worry about it. Let me worry about it. What a great way to live. Another thing live bait offers is the scent draws the fish. Fish have an incredible sense of smell. When you put live bait in your water, your targets can smell it from miles away. When you're walking with Jesus and you know you are, things will happen. It says in the Bible over and over again, Jesus says, these are the signs that follow the believers. God wants things to follow you. God wants signs to happen in your life. Why? Because then they'll know that God is real and alive in your life. We've got to let that happen. He does, and then the New Testament continues to add to that, add to that, and all the different gifts of the Spirit. God wants those to be involved. Is the scent that draws people to you and they see God actually moving in your life. Now the key is what kind of scent are you giving off? Bad bait gives off what? Bad, a bad scent. And you can sometimes draw the wrong type of things. You know, you want to catch fish, sometimes you catch a gator. You don't want to catch a gator. Well, if you're going hunting gators then on purpose, okay. But if you're going fishing, you don't want to catch a gator. Or if you're in the ocean, you don't want to catch a shark. Okay, that's not, you know, that's not really what you want to catch. Uh, you never seen the movie Jaws, okay? It's not, you know, that's something you want to see happen. We've got to be careful about what scent, and the problem is a lot of Christians give off the wrong scent. We need to make sure we give off the right scent by doing what God asks. And lastly, it says this, using live bait is typically easier. You know, you just put it on there and, and the fish... They, you don't have to, they wiggle and all that, and you wait for them to come on. Now, you're saying today, but witnessing is hard. Well, it's not supposed to be. It's supposed to be easy. The problem is because how we've been taught to witness to people is absolutely wrong. Here's how you're supposed to witness to somebody. Therefore, Ephesians 5.1, Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children. How do you witness to someone? You want to imitate Jesus. You want to imitate God, but as who? Dear children, this is where people get it wrong. They think how they're witnessing is actually being like God is. But he says, as dear children. And I'll tell you why that's important. When my kids were little, um, they, they, one day we had a friend of ours. Her name was Mavis. She bought my kids this vacuum cleaner that lit up a toy and, and made noise and all this. It was actually kind of irritating. You know, uh, because, but here's the thing. When, when my, my wife would run the vacuum cleaner, uh, they would get out uh, and they would vacuum behind my wife wanting to vacuum just like mom. They wanted to imitate mom. Then as they got older, some of you have children. Okay, you, you know what I'm talking about. Okay? They don't want to imitate. And that's happens in the Christian walk. When we become a Christian, we want to do everything Jesus says. And then when we get older, I don't want to do that anymore. God wants us to be like kids and want to imitate Him with a great attitude. I want to do this. You know, when they were five, six, seven, eight years old, man, mommy, daddy, whatever you want, I'll do it. Today it's like, oh, yeah. Have you done it yet? No. no. You know, it's just, you know, the way it is. Problem is, it only gets worse as people get older. But God says we need to imitate God like children imitate their parents. That's the kind of imitation we need to have. Where, oh, cool, I can't wait. But that's not how typically adults do it anymore, do they? Well, let me think about that. Let me see. Uh, check this. Uh, oh, God says, just imitate me like a child would. You know, when you do that, you know what God says? I'll do all the things for you. Do you want doing what I want? He's going to take care of you because you're, you're being, you're acting like what? His kid. Now, here's the thing. The best way, best way to witness Jesus is to impersonate him. Do you, and impersonations are really profitable. You talk, people go out and they make a lot of money. Anybody want to name who is the, 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 the impersonator who makes the most money on average of any impersonator? Who? You got it. If a guy does a good Elvis, he can make a good living. No impersonators make more money on average than Elvis impersonators. Even the bad ones make good money. Okay, is this something about Elvis, you know? You know, hunk of hunk of love, you know, whatever. You know, I'm, I'm not Elvis. Okay. 
But even the bad ones make money. But you know what? The good Elvises don't like the bad Elvises because they make their profession look bad. You know, we as Christians, we need to take our standards to a higher level. We can't just say, well, it's just, I'm just a Christian. We should be more now. We should be in love with the Lord. That's why it's important to restart our men's ministry. Tonight, if you're a guy and you haven't signed up, come. We got, we got enough stakes, I hope. If we don't, I'll, I'll make it happen. We'll pray and the guard will part the seat. You know, I, you know, we'll, we'll make sure it gets done. Plus, I don't want to have to give any to Irene. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but here's the deal. Imagine if everybody who called themselves a Christian imitated Jesus correctly. See, you don't have to tell people about Jesus if they see it. When you see an Elvis impersonator, you know it's a what? An Elvis impersonator. Yeah, you know because he's dead, right? Yeah, for those of you who think he's still alive, he's alive, he's like 100 and something now. Okay, if he was alive, no more hips, okay? All right, so, but, uh, but you know what? When you see an Elvis, you know he's an impersonator. You know exactly what that Elvis impersonator is going to do. When they see you as a Christian, do they know exactly what you're going to do? So that's, if they know you're a Christian, are you going to look like Jesus? Do they know how you're going to act? Because, you know, he says, you know, if we live like he lives, many things can happen. There's this wonderful verse a lot of Christianity uses. I want to share it with you. Most assuredly, John 14, 12 says, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. Now, we put that verse out there a lot, saying we can do greater things. But here's the deal. Here's the catch that God taught me today or this week. He said this. You can do this verse. This is a you said verse, but you can't do it unless you're actually impersonating Jesus the way Jesus wants to be impersonated. See, that's the problem. People want to do the greater works, and they wonder why the gifts are dead, why they don't see tongues and miracles and things happen all the time. Here's why. Because they're they're saying they're a Christian, but they're not impersonating Jesus the way they know they should. You got to what? What? You can do that. He who believes in me, or you can retranslate, he who impersonates me. Jesus is okay with us impersonating him. If we do it with all our heart. And the great thing, he gave us the Bible. said, hey, are you going to actually do what I say? The Ten Commandments, not the Ten Suggestions. This is what I say. If you know, what's he say? If you know to do good and don't do it, it's sin. So if you're doing something you know you shouldn't be doing... And then you come to me and say, why isn't God moving my life? I'll point you to this verse because you're not impersonating God very good. Now, it doesn't mean you can't sin and mess up. We all will. I do. Everybody does. But when you impersonate Jesus, you should realize you're doing something wrong. Say, God, forgive me and let me do better. That's all God asks. He doesn't expect you to be perfect. There's some people out there tell you that. But no, God God knows we're humans. But hey, get your right life. Because here's the thing. If you just let it keep going, you never deal with it. And then people wonder, why, can't, why isn't this verse real? It's because too many Christians or too many church religions preach uh, a watered-down Christianity. And they say, well, see, this, this verse just only applied back then or somewhere else. Or, you know, occasionally things can happen. If you have enough faith, this can happen. And boy, what a bunch of hooey that is. I had to be careful. I got my old man in my brain. And I wanted to say something that I don't say anymore. But if you want to do greater works, you can, but you've got to impersonate him. Now, does it, now, the way you impersonate him, the way I impersonate might be different because we're on different levels. I have a higher standard being a pastor. You just have to take the Bible, read it, and when you see something you shouldn't be doing, stop. That's all God asks. And do the right thing. And say, but I did this in the past. Remember, God doesn't care about your past. He doesn't care about your future. He cares about where you are right now. He's the God of the present. And he loves you. So this week, out of our 40 things, the question we have this week is going to be added. Our third question, I'll be on, online this week, will be this. How good is the bait you're using? All the tools we have, God has given to us freely. He's given to the church all the tools that we need. Oh, there's the hook. Good. Okay. I don't want to hook my eye. You know, it's right there. All right. But you know what? He's given us the tools. The question is, the bait that we use is up to us. Our lives and also the lures that we use. And they better be good. And here's why they better be good. Because, you know, the world, the world has a lot of good equipment too. They have a lot of good tools too. 
They have access to a lot of great things. The devil is not powerless. Do not think he is. But you are more powerful than him because of Jesus Christ who lives inside of you. But you know what? The world, though, they use some good stuff. See, the problem is sometimes the church doesn't seem to want to compete with the world. We need to compete with them as good as them. That's why we, we put lights up here and different things. And te- we, we need to be not following the trend, but being the trendsetter. Too many times church is following the world rather than leading the world. And we need to do those things. That's why doing the mini golf thing, that sounds weird. How is that Christian? Well, we're trying to meet a need for our community. We need to think that way. Because the world, it has a lot of good bait. I need a volunteer who knows how to use a fishing pole because I'm not going to touch it. Who's a fisherman? No fisherman in the room? Nobody can hold a pole? Oh, James, congratulations. Thanks for being volunteered by, by Verna. Come on. Give him a round of applause. Yeah, you, yeah, come on, yeah, yeah. His shirt says, what, you, you all need, you, what? You all need Jesus. That's great. You're going to look good on camera. All right. Your, your, your worldwide debut. Okay, come on over. All right, come on over here. I need you to hold this for me. And uh, so what I, need, what I need is I'm going to give you things to put on the hook and then kind of dang, I want to dangle in front of everybody. Okay? Can you handle that for me? I'm already messing it up, so. All right. You know, the world, it has a lot of great things out there, and we need to be better. You know, the world dangles stuff like this in front of you. Anybody know what this is? Money. Right now, is not the world trying to dangle that in front? You just go ahead and hook that. Go ahead and, yeah. You know what else the world tries to do? I got a couple more to go on there. Huh? Money, yeah. The world likes to dangle this in front of people right now. Fear. Be afraid. Let someone else take control of your life. Let somebody else. You can add that to it. I stick myself in the thing, so... You know what else the world dangles in front of people? Anybody know what this picture represents? Power. Yeah, you can be powerful. You don't need anybody else. You can do it yourself. You don't need need no Jesus. You don't need nobody else. It's all about me, right? How does that work out real well right now? Now, one more. Entitlement. I deserve it. I'm this, I'm that. I, I, des- I, I deserve all this for doing nothing. Is that not being dangled in front of the world right now? Go ahead. And the world has all these wonderful tools. Hopefully we can get it on there. Oh, cool, because I, 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 someone else struggles. Praise the Lord. <laughs> no, this yeah, and then you know what? They cast it out in front of us. Just cast a little bit out. If I cast it, I'd probably kill Lloyd in the front row. So, you do that for me? There we go. And then you just hold it up there and let people, you know what happens? And the world dangles it in front of people. Yeah, and, you got it, and it pulls you in, right? And people want to grab it and grab this and grab that. But you've got to realize the world is doing that. Thank you so much. You can, you can give him a round of applause. I can hold it from here. I think I'm going to kill myself. But the world dangles these things out like a little carrot, a little worm, a little bait. The world has good bait. We need to have better bait. The problem is Christianity as a whole is settled for okay bait. Or settled for secondhand stuff. Well, we can do that for that. We, can, we, we, we don't have to do that. You know, we need to have good bait. Sometimes that takes money, time, effort. Promise, many times in the church world, we put as little money and little effort into something to make it happen. But we need to put it out there because the world is doing that. People are coming to it. You know why I know this bait works? Because so many people are being sucked in by it. And then they come to me and they tell me this didn't work and that didn't work. You know, I tell them, that's right, it didn't work. But here's the cool thing. The world might be sucked in by that bait. And it could happen. But you know what? And they might try that. But here's the great thing about Jesus. is That stuff can all go away in an instant. Because here's the thing. See, the world wants to suck you in. And they want to be like a real... You know what a real fisherman does? They get a fish on there. What do they do? Once they suck you in, a fisherman does what? Then they clean the fish, gut the fish out, and sell it and eat it, right? That's what the world wants to do. It wants to make no mistake... 
Men cannot help you with your problems. A mortal is not your answer. They want to, someone who's dangles in front of you, they have an agenda. They want to suck you in so they can clean you out. They might want to clean you out of your money. They might want to clean you out of your hope. And this world and day and age right now, they want to clean you out of your identity. And when you lose that, especially your identity, then anybody can tell you who you are rather than you finding out who you are. That's what the world is trying to do. Now we need to make sure we're using the right bait. Why the 40-day challenge is here? Oh, I, I know what that is, but not yet. We are, and here's the thing. We are all fishing in the same pond. The world is fishing for the same people that we're fishing for. The difference is, is they're getting, they, they, they think they're getting hope and all this from them, but really there's somebody trying to just take from them and give to themselves. Where God wants to catch you, make fish. And then you know, instead of gutting you, He wants to clean you up. He wants to give you life. He wants to put you in a better pond called heaven. And so you can flourish forever and ever. He wants to provide for you. It's the difference between the two. He wants to give you hope. But we have to do things that stand out. Because here's why we need to stand out. Because the world's going to try these things. But here's what's going to happen though. Sometimes they're going to get dissatisfied because you know what? That stuff always fails. God's the only one that doesn't fail. And then if we have the right bait, the fish get off that bait and maybe click onto our bait. Because you know, God knows humans are going to try all kinds of different things. We just need to be patient like a good fisherman and put the right bait out there. Eventually they'll come to ours. And, and how do I know that works? Because the world is going after anything right now. They're looking for the right thing. We just got to put the right bait out there and you know what? They're going to come. Prophecy was one day they'll be seeking us out, Isaiah 62. <clears throat> We're, the, if, if the coronavirus and all stuff, I'm not saying it's from God or anything like that or what's going on and there's these riots and that. The one thing that everything's making people wonder, they're questioning what is real? What is right? And they can eat up everything they want from any type of news source, no matter what news source. At some point, they're going to go to the actual guy who knows the real news which is Jesus Christ. And all we got to do is put the right bait out there. It, fishing really isn't hard right now. We just got to be patient and the place is going to be filled. Why? Because if we... Put, now, it'll be filled if we put out what? The right bait. That's why men's ministry is important. Women's ministry is starting back up. All the different things we do for kids and everything we do in the church. Jeremiah ministry is starting back up. The mini golf thing. Why? Because we need to put a lot of different lures and bait out there. And, but while we do them have the right stuff out that they really want. Because trust me, the stuff that Jesus offers them is what they want. They just don't know it yet. They want hope. They want security. They want safety. You don't want to have to worry. Yeah, they got bills. They got this. They got that. But God says, I will take care of that for you if you just what? Impersonate me. That's all we got to do. I just got a short video and then we're going to end with, end with a song. The song today is called, I am who you say I am. That's the challenge for Christianity. That's what makes bait different. Are you who you say you are? What's that mean? Well, I'm a Christian. Well, are you that? Do people actually see that? Because if they see an Elvis in person there, they say who? Elvis. If they see a Christian, and we're called Christians because we're in who? Christ. They better see who in you? Christ. Because otherwise, we're actually hurting the kingdom of God, are we not? So i got a quick video of how we can do that. You might, in this video, you might see yourself, or you might see someone you know, or you might see how you could be that person. So, and then while this video is going on, worship team, if you can join me on stage.
Now, just like fishing, those people who are mentioned who struggle through different things, you, just like a fish, you don't always see the fish in the water. Unless you go to a really clear place, you can't see the fish. You put the hook in there and hope the fish finds the bait, right? Those around you, you might not see that they're hurting, that they need something. But you know what? That's why we need to create the right bait. So they come to what? Us. You know, it's, it, it, a lot of people, most people hide their issues. Because they don't know who to trust. The guy who's looking for a good concert and wants to hear Elvis music is going to go find an Elvis impersonator. The guy's looking for real, wants real love, real hope, real answers to their problems. They need to find a Christ impersonator. And so today, that's our challenge there. Are you who you say you are? So today, as we sing this song, I'm going to have, I have two things I want to do today. The first one takes guts on your part. If you're here today, and you're one of those people in that video, you're going through something, you just don't know what's going through. First of all, you need to understand, first of all, we're family. And no one's going to look down on you. If they look down on you, I will go after that person, because that is not the way a church should be. This church better impersonate the church of Acts chapter 2. If you have an issue today, I want you to come forward. You don't have to say what it is, but we want to pray for you, and God wants to meet you here. And in, second, after, in the second verse of the song, and I'm going to invite everybody in the church to come forward and say, do you want to take the challenge today, this week's challenge in our four-day challenge, can you imitate, imitate Christ better? Now, here's the thing I'm going to tell you today. If you already think you can Im- you're imitating Christ to the best of your ability... You are missing the boat. You can always get closer to Jesus. And if you think you're there, you need to come see me because the devil's about to knock you off. Because when we think we get that pride in our head that we've already arrived, that's the devil can knock our blocks off. I can tell from experience. I've been a pastor for 28 years. And I I thought when I was early in my life, I thought I knew it all. That that senior pastor of mine, he doesn't know what he's talking about. And boy, you know what? I got my my head knocked off a few times. Why? Because he knows us as humans how we are. And the way, because what did Jesus do? He said he did not come to serve, to be served, but to serve. He He stayed humble his whole entire life. The question is, can we do that? So in the first verse, if you're here today and you need that, come from front. Because then the people who come in the second one, and you might be part of both, they're going to stand behind you for a reason because they're going to not stand, they're going to stand behind you because they're with you. We are here to help you. Too many times in churches people go, oh, that's Tim's problem. I don't need to deal with that. You know, I'm not saying you have a problem. Okay, okay. But if Tim has a problem, whose problem is it? Our problem, because we are a family. That's the, that's the world. The world's everybody for themselves. Jesus says, no, you're better together. That's why church is here. You don't come to church to learn. You're supposed to do your devotions on your own. You're supposed to pray in it. You come to church, you get encouraged, and I can tell you how you're supposed to apply what you learn to your life. And Jesus said, he's the one that speaks to Paul, but not me. And he's telling you to do that today. So right now, let's sing the first chorus. We want to... If you need some today, come forward. Don't be ashamed. And, and the devil's going to say, well, what are people going to think of me? No one's going to think that of you. If someone does, I will knock their block off. And I say that with love because you know what? That's helping the person who has that attitude because they need to not have that attitude because they're not impersonating Christ. You know, the Bible says you've got to love, but the Bible's also useful for rebuking and correcting. Sometimes I've got to do that. Why? Because I love you. Because that is love. That makes you on the right path. So right now as we sing the first chorus, I don't need this, yes, because I will not follow the words. Just, if you, let's just stand and sing. And if you have any need at all, you're one of those people, come stand up here. Don't be embarrassed. Let God touch you today.
to you. If I'm here for you, I love you. I want to help whatever is needed. You know what? I also want to find people that can help you because you know what? We're in this together. And I want to thank you for coming forward. God sees your step of faith today. That is not easy to do. Thank you for that. You might be one of those pictures. Maybe you're looking in the room and say, oh, I didn't realize they were part of that picture today. You know what? We never know what someone's going through. We need to be there for them. Now, the second chorus today, as we sing this, it's going to say, I am who I, right? The next part. I am, it gets to that part, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. okay. Thank you. I, I'm not the music person. Of course. Yeah. When you sing that, realize who you are. And as we sing that, the rest of you in this room, it's your turn to come and say, you know what, I'm here for them, but I'm also here because I need to impersonate Jesus better. There's no one who can't do that better. Because you know what, Jesus is looking for those who be humble. Basically, it's, it's a commitment to say, God, I'm here for them, but I'm also here because I want these people out there in that world that I need to be better for. I need to be the best bait I can be. So as we sing this part, I encourage everybody else to come and join behind them. And let's pray for them, but also tell God, I am humble. I'm humble to say, God, I can be better. Go ahead.
and you have a need, thank you so much for coming for us. We're going to sing this one last time. Sing it up all your might. I'd like to sing the chorus a cappella if we could. I, 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 I'm not going to leave. Uh, but I want you to sing it out. Tell God. Is it, go back one. I am. Oh, go okay. ahead. Back. Okay. Is that where it starts? The chorus? I am chosen. Sing I am chosen. Let's sing it to God's our might. For those of you who are here for a need, hey, you want your life, hey, make your relationship with God even better. This is your chance to do that. If you're afraid to shout out here in church, guess what? You're going to be afraid to shout out there in the world. If you can't shout here, forget about your witness out there. You are definitely not live faith. I mean, I'm just, I, I, I got to tell you how it is. And those up front, you have a problem. You know what? God says, you know what? Give it to him. You got to cast it away. You got to let it go. If you don't need to keep it on you, then God can't deal with it. Because remember I preached a few months ago, if you don't cast it away and you hold on to it, then God can't take it from you because he'll be throwing you out with it. And so as we sing, I want you to shout. That's why we're doing acapella. Acapella, not pello. I don't know what that means. Uh, when you sing this song and say, I'm chosen, I'm saying, I am who you say I am. Next screen, please. You are for me, not against it. Really shot that part. I am who you say I am. Then the last part. Oh, I am who you say I am. Yes, I am. That's how we're going to end today's service. That's our prayer today. But I'm going to pray real quick for you. And I'm done praying. When I say amen, we're going to go right. Actually, I'm not going to say amen because amen means we hang up, right? We're not going to hang up today. I got I to gotta do what I say, right? Dear Lord, today we bless all those who are here, Lord. First of all, Lord, we bless those who have a need today, Lord. Let them know in a great way right now, Lord, you are there to help them with their need no matter what it is right now. And Lord, let them realize that there's people in this room, that every single person in this room is for them. Jesus is for them. We are one family together. Those that have needs, you can help others that have needs. We might want to help each other out. But Lord, we're here today saying that we want to impersonate you, Jesus. And those who are here today saying... Maybe I don't have a need today, but I'm here because I need to be a better impersonator of Jesus. My bait needs to be better. The church's bait needs to be better. We need to do that, Lord, because there's a lost and dying world. Fish are dying every day. We need them to go to know that they can be alive with Jesus forever. The world is such a short place. But, Lord, Jesus is what it's all about. Help us today, Lord, as we sing this song. As you said, the things you say to us, we're saying this to you that we know who we are. I am who you say I am. And we're going to sing it today like we mean it. Not wrong, well, not like we mean it. Because we mean it. Because God, we're putting you on notice that we love you. And we want you to fulfill your side and to love us and do amazing things. Let's reach out to him today. So right now, let's sing this chorus. So let's do it a cappella. I'm going to turn my mic off so I don't kill anybody. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am tell you a difference. Amen. And when someone does, look at him in the face and say, no, I'm not. This is who I am. 
and watch Jesus move for you. Amen. Have a great week. If you're a guy, I'll see you here at 5 o'clock. And Wednesday night, have a great class. So have a great week. And remember, Jesus loves you. I love you. And you Amen.